Good morning. Let's see if this camera's here. Happy Sabbath. How you doing today? It's wonderful to have you here on Streams of Life, whether you're here in the sanctuary. Are you here? Can I hear you guys? Wow, that I can tell it's one of those days. I know Polly. I talked to you, Polly, earlier. I know these days sometimes the pain, and I know I, I have uh, sometimes the nerve pain from all the the inflammation that happens when there's high humidity and kind of when the weather doesn't know what's going on but that doesn't mean that jesus isn't here with us today he takes away pain and reminds us of what our purpose is okay so you online welcome to streams of life to living stones and sunland thonga seventh avenue churches i'm pastor john remember during the service smash that like button if you wish to share this please feel sharing it either on facebook on YouTube or any of the other mediums we're on. We love having you here and I love having all of you here as well. May God bless you and it looks like we have a praise team today. Praise God, thank you so much. Sterwin and the praise team, we're ready to go. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God
praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall he can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. I'm 68, so I'm, I can afford to have some notes. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are so glad that you are here with us today. I heard a story recently that I wanted to share with you. If anybody knows anything about college professors, you know that they are just about like gods. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And sure enough, this professor told this class that at the beginning of the semester, they would have to turn in a paper at the end of the, the class, the last day of class. The paper had to be at least 10 pages long, had to be typed and double-spaced. And if they didn't turn in the, the paper on the last day of class, they would fail the class. He told that every week to the class, so there was no, no possibility that they could not understand what the, the uh, actions would be or what the requirements of the class were. Well, that final day came, and as you guessed, three people did not turn in their paper. The first one said that his car broke down. Second one said his computer crashed, so he couldn't get anything off the hard drive. The third one said his father had a stroke and he had to take him, he had to rush him to the hospital, to the emergency room. So the professor listened intently to each of the students' comments, and unfortunately, he still told them, you failed the class. The rest of the class was just horrified. They said, these people have legitimate excuses. So what in the world why would you fail them when you know they've got a good excuse? Well, he reminded them, the class, that again, he told them every week what the requirements were that they had to the last day of class to get their paper ready. So there was just no excuses, no tolerations for them whatsoever. The Lord's rules about the judgment day are the same. There will be no exceptions, and on that day, 
we will stand before God and we will either be cleansed through Jesus' blood or we will fail. No excuses, no exceptions. Well, fortunately for the class, that same professor, when he, when he gave them those rules, he also said, my son will write the paper for you. In fact, he will do all the research, all the work, and he'll get it in on time. In fact, he'll write a better paper than you ever could. And yet, there are still some people in the class that refused the professor's offer. They said, no, not now. I don't trust the professor. I'll do it myself. On that day, the judgment day, I want my Lord to tell me because of Jesus' sacrifice, I have passed the class. So my question to you, which group are you going to be in? Again, we are so glad that you are here today with us celebrating. Praise singers, please take it away. Is 
the Lord Almighty, holy, 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 holy is the Lord Almighty, holy, holy. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. And uh, just trying to organize everything. You know, with a live stream going on, it's sometimes hard because, uh, you know, there's so many different technical pieces, but it's great having you guys here as well as everyone here today. And um, now, before the offering, I'd like to ask Lily, where are you, Lily? I know you're out there somewhere hiding in the back. There you go. Come on down, Lily. And um, while she's coming down, I don't know, raise your hand if you were at God's closet this week or if you had it in your prayers. Um, I'm telling you, I'd like to give a bit of a, a, a hand to everyone that was involved in God's closet. Um, it was absolutely beautiful this week. And, um, and I want to thank all of those that came. You can, Lily, you can take that, that mic there. But I want to thank also not only Lily, but also um, now is, uh, uh, let me see if uh, Ted and, and uh, Diane, Diane, is Diane here today? Well, I'm telling you, Diane and Ted were going at it as well. I also saw Susan here going at it, and, and also Ryan and Lauren were there, and May Lynn with all the food with your family. We thank God for, for Sean also and your kids. Um, it, it's, uh, uh, I believe it's Alyssa and Matthew. Cosette as well. Cosette was here, you bet. And uh, I mean, at God's closet, that is. Also, we want to thank those, uh, there's the Alares, Dr. and Mrs. O, uh, when I say Mrs. Augustine O, as well as their son, we had from Glendale Filipino, Central Filipino, right? Central Filipino. Glendale Filipino. And what other church? What, the Pathfinders. And let's have some mic over here. What other church was there? Pathfinders, Altadena. Very good. Um, want to thank each one. Vallejo. Polly. Uh, and if you go online, by the way, if you go to Facebook, whether it be Living Stones or Sunlantanga, you will see a lot of pictures. Yeah. You want to go see a lot of pictures? Don't <laughs> do it right now. Stick with us. But afterwards, you can go take a look and see. And you know the reason why we put those pictures? It's partially like a, a little bit of a personal thing. I want people to see those so that they come next time, right? Yes. And help out maybe even more people. Do you have anything special to say, Lily? I just really want to thank everybody who provided um, donations for the school supplies. We had 75 backpacks that was given to us by Co Comprehensive Community Health Center. And we, we got the donations for the school supplies and we were able to put them in all of them. And a lot of them were really uh, blessed by, with the backpacks. Thank yes. you. And we got also from food supplies from First Baptist Church in Silmar. They were really good. I, now I know where to go. That's right. <laughs> uh, and, and just many donations from people, from vendors. Bamba, we got some socks from Bamba. So Amen. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Anyway, I don't want to make this long, but yeah. yet at the same time, now, you're going to let us know as we continue on and start the schedule, because we're going to do it again, probably. November, coming up in November, coming up in November, maybe 7. Mark your calendars just before Thanksgiving time. Yeah, so we right. get it before the holiday season instead right. of in the middle of it like last year. So uh, anyway, praise the Lord. Again, we want to thank God for the opportunity to be able Amen. to do something for Amen. him, for the community around us. And thank you for Cesar for helping us one time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, excellent. Thank you, Lily. And uh, we will continue to uh, do many things for the community. So, um, all right. And also at the same time, if you'll notice, uh, I think it's going to be this side here. There's going to be two little QR codes that show up. If you're here in front of you, you'll find envelopes if you wish to give to Living Stones or Sunland Remember. ST is for Sunland Tahanga. 
LS is for living stones. So on the envelope, when it says church, just put in the church, and we always make sure it gets there. Number two, we also have these two QR codes. Living Stones is here, and I believe Sutherland Thunga is right underneath on the other side. And you can, if you're watching this on a monitor, you can put your phone up, and when you put it on the QR code, you can click it, and it'll go right to the digital envelope. And also, if you're on Facebook, it's right above my head on the timeline, the very first thing, the thing that says, God is love. If you're at the Living Stone site, it will go there. If you're at the Sunland Thonga site, it will go there. We are two churches, but we are one as a team. Until we get that place organized and open over there, we're worshiping together, stay strong and build up the leadership team. Are you with me in that? And remember, so many times when we ask for people to give, we start thinking, oh my, it's, they're asking for money again. No, God doesn't want your money. That's dangerous to say, I realize. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You need to learn how to give. Why? Because as you give, God's able to bless you. You see, God doesn't give us stuff when he knows it's gonna go nowhere. He does give everything. He gives us our life and our, you know, he can give us joy, he gives us all kinds of things, but as we learn to give of ourselves, even painfully, God, in turn, says, oh, there's a spigot that has water coming out of it that can feed ministry. So then he starts to organize so that more comes through that spigot. Does that make sense? So essentially what you're doing by giving is you're allowing God to use you for something bigger. Do you want to have purpose and meaning in your life? Then maybe it's time to start discovering how God gives meaning to others. Sometimes by giving to your local church, and giving to tithe, God can then open up the floodgates of heaven. I heard that somewhere. Open up the floodgates of heaven to pour on you a blessing that you cannot even accept. That's why we ask. Because God uses people just like you and me to be able to make his purpose shine in a dark world. Now it's time for the garden of prayer have a little music there. Um, I got a few requests just this morning and um, I want to make sure that we go through this. Um, Maria, this morning, I just got your text and she wants a special prayer for Norma. Norma, who's dealing with cancer. Also, uh, Linda's mom. I don't use last names. I want to make sure we don't use last names online. But Linda's mom needs a heart surgery. This is a different Linda than we all know here at Living Stones. Uh, the other Linda's mom that's going through a replacement of her liver. We want to remember her as well in our prayers. But um, this one needs heart surgery and that the, her sons may have the Holy Spirit touch them. Esther just sent me a text. Esther, who's going to be singing here next week, I heard. Uh, Esther sends her love to us all over here in California. Also, Donna has a special prayer for Dalen and for Will, a prayer of healing, and that also God protect the whole family. Also, we want to remember the Karingal, Karingal, my own family members, my uncle and aunt, they both passed away over in the Philippines this week. Um, that's a hard one. Um, that was COVID-19. And so in the hospital. So we just want to remember the whole covering out of family. Uh, mommy, my mother-in-law uh, is now the only sister of the many sisters that she had. Uh, so, um, so we want to remember mommy always, Ophelia. And I'm so happy that daddy, my father-in-law's birthday was just yesterday. Wasn't it, Anna? Just yesterday. We, we called him up on the 20th, it was. And so, um, and so we want to remember him in our prayers. We loved him so much. We love him so much. Also, Maresh, she has a special prayer for her uncle. Her uncle passed away over in Armenia on the 20th. And, um, and uh, let's say, I'm going to catch this. A prayer for my aunt. We will remember your aunt. I don't know who you are, 
but your aunt we will be praying for. Jesus knows, okay? Also, we want to remember um, Maresh's uncle, her, his name is Yagshish. Yagshish, I, I, I'm sorry, I, missed, I messed it up. Forgive me, but let's remember him and the family in our prayers. Also, all of those dealing with, and this reminds me, because this is in Armenia, Lebanon. We want to remember our family and friends in Lebanon and all of those that are dealing with the madness. Syria, Lebanon. When I say madness, I'm talking about political Afghanistan. Guys, I don't know if you've seen on the news. It is unbelievable. And um, it, it, I'm sorry, I, I can't talk about it much because <laughs> I get upset. But um, we want to remember not only the Americans there, but also those people over there. And, and we pray that that something good happened from this. Um, also, Romeo just texted me. We want to remember uh, his sister Eden and Zenny. Both are sick right now. So we want to remember Eden and Zenny. Also, Art, life. Art, I'm not forgetting you, man. Art is asking for life and healing. Life and healing in particular. Want to remember Rick also. Rick, health. Rick, God knows who Rick is. Health. Also, there's another Rick that I have here. Um, Rick, uh, whose wife, Heather, just gave birth to their son, their son, Chayton. She had a cesarean section, and now she's back in the hospital with an infection. So we want to remember her in our prayers. That he is, he's a new father with this little baby at home, and mom's in the hospital recovering. Um, we want to remember them in our prayers as well. Jesus remembers. Jesus knows and he cares. Amen? Amen. Okay, uh, Alicia uh, also, um, who is not here today. Alicia, she had a vaccination, but not COVID-19. It was shingles, and boy, that vaccination was harsh on her. She's gone through all kinds of pain, so we want to remember them in our prayers. Alicia and Brian, we love you guys. Also, we want to remember uh, Tatiana, who lost her father, Alexander, on Wednesday morning. Tatiana, who lost her father, Alexander, on Wednesday morning. And also, um, again, we have urgent prayer. This is from you, Diane, on um, the missionaries over there in Afghanistan. And uh, let's just remember our missionaries, our hospitals, our schools, everyone trying to share the gospel around the world. Times are getting crazy right now. And so um, we just want to remember, we know though, this is the nice thing. It's negative, but let me give you some good news. We know who's in charge. Jesus said something very interesting in Matthew 24 and 25. He said, you guys know the signs of the times when you look at the trees, when the, when the leaves begin to fall and when the, the, fro, the, the, the figs start to ripen, you know that it's time for harvest and you know the autumn is coming. But how come don't you know the signs of the times? See, God gives us very real indications that he is coming soon. It's time for us to tell others about Jesus until he comes. You know, that's really the blessing we've been given. He's asked us to be small spigots of living water to share with others. And I'm so glad our churches have been here and working together through all these pandemics and things. Sometimes we forget about the importance of doing something for him. We get so concerned about ourselves instead we need to we need to connect with jesus now there was one other text i think i got before the end here and um, we want to remember surely we want to remember surely in our prayers that is surely orvin surely in our prayers having a medical procedure today and also that reminds me about shirley and nika um, we appreciate you guys and we love you as well stay strong surely and all of you out there there are many others who have not had anything mentioned about their request. Please raise your hand. If you'd like a special request or, or have a special prayer or maybe a praise, please raise your hand now. Jesus sees it. Okay. Now I'm going to give a moment of silence during this prayer so that you can bring your own request quietly and then we end with what? Do you remember what we end with? The Lord's Prayer, our Father. So let's, let's pray together. 
If you wish to kneel, you can. If you wish to stand, you can. Or if you wish to sit, let's just come to Jesus right now. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you've heard our requests. We thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to be with you together as one family here in this place. We love you so much, and we know you love us. Help us to rearrange our lives so that we may be a light in this world of darkness. For God has called us not to be taken out of the world, to though change the world. We are not of the world, but we are in the world so that we may bear fruit that leads to eternal life for others as well as ourselves. Now there are silence we will take, Lord, where each person, please bring your request to Jesus now, quietly. Lord, you hear our requests. You love us so much. You love the world so much that you came and died so that we might have life in you. Thank you. And Lord, we look forward to that day when we all will be at a long table after the resurrection and the second coming. When we can sit together, no more social distancing because of race, because of color, because of language, or because of sickness and sin. Lord, we are one family and we look forward to that day being together with you at our side, Lord Jesus. Until that day comes, we promise to tell others. We promise to tell others. Thank you, Jesus. And now we will end with the Lord's Prayer. Say it with me now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, ever and ever. Amen.
was wonderful and now we'll get things situated up here thank you so much I love that song let's give another hand here I know working it out up here and um, yes Anna I'm remembering to take all the stuff out of my pockets yes I know my dad always used to do this at church and dad's here it's great having you here dad and dad used to say Okay, my wife has told, I remember this, Harriet has told me that I must take these keys out of my pocket. <laughs> so, like father, like son, right? So this is how it goes. But you know what the blessing is? The blessing is, no matter what we got in our pockets, the most important thing is what comes from here, right? For some of us, that isn't so good. All of us, you know, in Jeremiah, it says the heart is deceptive above all things. And today, we must do our best to discover how God can cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. It doesn't mean we're going to be perfect, but it does mean that we're going to become better every day, right? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. We are so fortunate to be here together in this place. There are many that are on beds of sickness right now. This last year has been incredible for many families. We've experienced our own church family being affected, whether at San Mantanga or Living Stones. But at the same time, we know that these things are, bit tr are but transitory. We know that there is light always that shines in darkness. Help us to be the light this morning in your name. Amen. I'd like you to turn with me to Micah, a very unread book. You know, I, I always uh, joke about it. Um, you, know, uh, you know, at seminary, um, uh, there was a teacher that I had, Antonio Bueno. And um, Antonio Bueno, you know, uh, you know the Ellen White books are called the Red Books. You ever hear of that being the Red Books? And because they're red, <laughs> right? It's like that maroon color. And Antonio Bueno says, I'd like you to open up the unread books. <laughs> but I get what he was saying. But I'm telling you, there are books of the Bible that are unread. Because that's even more important than any of the things that Ellen White have to write. Because she's a lesser light that leads to the what? 
the greater light. And one of these books is Micah, a small book in the Old Testament. And many times we ignore these books because they're so small, they seem so insignificant, and because (laughs) Jesus came in the New Testament, right? So oftentimes we only look to the New Testament, but what we must realize is that the entire Bible is one story, not multiple. The same stuff that Jesus dealt with in the New Testament was the exact same scriptures that he used in the Old Testament. And in fact, Jesus was there. Testing, did I go offline? Can everyone hear me here? Yeah, can anyone hear me? Looks like batteries have gone out. All right, testing one, two, then we'll go here unless the system went out. We, we on here? There we are, we'll use this one. Christopher, maybe it's time to change the battery or something because this thing's not on. All right, thank you. I love when it happens during the service, right? All right, very good. Testing, are we on? Is everything okay? I'm not hearing myself. That's, hello on online land. We're having technical difficulties. Keep watching. All right, very good. Thank you so much. Is this one, can you hear it online okay? Good to go, all right. So in the Old Testament is the book of Micah. Micah, chapter six. If you have it either in your phone, one of these guys here, in your phone, or the actual written uh, on a piece of paper, um, I'd like you to start with verse one with me. Are you ready? It says, listen to what the Lord says. Stand up and plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear you, O mountains, the Lord's ascension, excuse me, his accusation. Listen, you everlasting fountains, foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is longing He is lodging a charge against Israel. Now, let's stop right there. Basically, what we're seeing here is that God is upset at Israel. And we're going to find out the reason why he's a little annoyed at Israel. Because Israel had actually lost its way. Have you lost your way in your life before? Are there times in your life where you have forgotten the things that God has given you? Maybe you stepped away. Maybe right now might be one of those times. Perhaps you are going through something. And the reason why you're going through it is because you have stepped away maybe from some of the rules that God has given you in your life. Are you in that situation? Israel was there. We've all made mistakes and errors in our lives. Just because God is upset and wants us to change does not mean, it does not mean that he doesn't love you for he wants change to occur. That is the context. For Israel had gotten rid of the commandments and stopped following God in the way that it should. Israel had walked away from God. So, let's continue. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me, God says. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you. Aaron and Miriam. Are we on here? We still not on this thing? Number four? All right. Testing, testing one. Is it actually working now? Very good. Praise the Lord. All right. Now I can think. All right. So, he says, (laughs) so he says, What have I done to you? I sent you Moses, I brought you out of Egypt, and yet it seems like you're ignoring me, 
God says. My people, remember what Balak, the king of Moab, plotted. Now, the king of Moab actually wanted to destroy Israel. And remember, if you know the story, Balaam, Balaam, he actually was supposed to curse Israel, but yet God forced him out of it, even by a donkey speaking to him, if you remember. And so Balaam, as he gave a curse, he was supposed to give a curse to Israel, he actually brought a blessing upon Israel. So God is reminding them of the stories of the past and how those blessings occurred and how God has brought you and me through circumstances in our lives, right? The reason why we forget. Let me stop for here. The reason why we forget is why. Why is it that you and I sometimes forget about God? Let me ask you, why? Why do we forget about God sometimes? Why do you think? We get too comfortable. That's true. We get too comfortable. What are other ways that make us forget about God. What, what are other reasons that we forget? Things are going really well. Distractions. There's another thing. We get very religious. Have you ever gotten religious? So religious that we can't remember Jesus? Have you ever seen that before? Sometimes we like to exercise our religion that benefits us and how we feel rather than sharing a faith that matters to others. We kind of look at ourselves, don't we? We put up big walls. We use lots of mortar and rebar and cement. And we block ourselves in from the what? The world. After all, we quote Jesus and say, don't love the world or anything in it. That means I can't, I, I, I'm better than them. But the problem is, is in the Bible, whenever you find something that is out, seems out to lunch, Keep reading and you will find out. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. Most of the problems that we face in our lives when we read the Word of God and we find something really off, if you keep reading, you will find out actually it makes perfect sense from God's point of view. Let me keep reading. So now we move on down to where Micah has his deal that he's giving to, or should I say God's deal, giving to Israel. Chapter 6, verse 6. I'm glad there's not another 6 after this. With what shall I come before the Lord? Micah says. And, and bow down before the exalted God. Shall I come before him with what? Bird offerings? With calves a year old? Now what that means is, is, let's translate it today. Do I come with millions of dollars? Do I come with the best of stuff? What is it that God wants from me? I remember, I'm reminded of a movie called The Godfather. I know you're not supposed to watch that, right? We're Seventh Dad, and it's not supposed to watch those. But I saw it when I was a very little kid. It's all my dad's fault. No, just kidding. I remember the baptism scene. Unbelievable baptism scene. Where Michael Colleone is doing the holy thing in the name of the Padre, the Fili, the Spiritu Santi, while his people are destroying all of the competition. Yeah. Sometimes we look holy on the outside. 
and we bring all the burnt offerings and we bring piles of money and we care for the church and we forget why we do what we do. In fact, hold your finger right there. I'm going to go to a very scathing moment that Jesus had for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I don't want to lose my spot. There it is. Sorry, forgive me. My bookmark. My Father's Day bookmark. Thank you, Arlene. All right, so um, here we go. In Matthew 23, Matthew chapter 23, if you got it here, this is probably the most intense Jesus gets in the entire Bible. And I'm going to move it down all the way to verse, um, well, let's start with verse 1, 2. Jesus says, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they what? Preach. Wow. Jesus is already starting. Now, you must understand Pharisees, Sadducees, those in the temple actually were the political leaders of the time. Not just religious, but political leaders. He's basically saying that both the Republicans and the Democrats are not practicing what they preach. They're just trying to get elected, right? That's basically what he's saying here. And then you move down to, let's go with verse, let's see which verse it is. Hard to see it in here. It's 13, it looks like. He says, woe to you, leaders of the law and Pharisees, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocritos. You know what a hypocrite means? I had a sermon earlier. It was outside, I think. The word hypocrita means actor in Greek. Hollywood, right? I am going to make sure that I advertise for this political cause. Everyone. Everyone has to wear a mask. Stop it. You need to wear a mask. And then when the camera turns around, that person has no mask. Have you ever seen that? You ever seen that? Hypocritas. We act in front of people, but then in our lives, we don't worry about it. That's called the hypocritas. Jesus is saying that leadership is judging and using justice to whack others. Let's move backward now back to, um, to Micah. Go ahead back to Micah because we get to the pertinent text, a powerful text, and it's one I want you to take home with you. I'd like you to have like a fortune cookie in your pocket all the time. Don't eat it if it's in your pocket all the time. But the, you know the little fortune cookies where you go to uh, Panda Inn and you get one of these little, uh, these little, uh, Confucius say things, you know. Wonderful one that I remember was uh, uh, vision without practicality is like a bird without feet. I love that one. That's really powerful. Imagine a bird that can't land, can't do anything. He's got a lot of vision, but he's not practical. And ministry has to be practical as well as, well as visionary, right? So here is the fortune cookie I want you to take home with you today from Micah. Let's continue. So what shall I come as an offering? And what shall I offer him? Verse 7. This is in Micah chapter 6, verse 7. Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams and ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? That's all outside things. Here is now what God asked. He has shown you, O person. You may have in your Bible, man. The word in Hebrew here is Adam. 
Adam, you've heard of Adam, right? Adam, right? The first man. And remember, Isha, which is female, is, this is Isha, who's come from Adam. You don't remember that? So basically, it's like anthropos. Anthropology is not just the study of men, but women too. So this applies to men and women here. He has shown you, O people, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to act with what? Justice, to act justly and to love what? Mercy. Now, let's stop there real quick. Looking at the clock, I want to make sure I'm not too late. I'm going to refer to John chapter 8 for a second. In John chapter 8, we had a lot of justice loving. A bunch of Pharisees, a bunch of teachers of the law, a bunch of Sadducees. They wanted to entrap Jesus. So they grabbed this woman who has been caught in adultery. And they throw her down in front of Jesus and says, the law of Moses says that she should be stoned. What do you say? And of course, they knew that Jesus would say, forgive her, because they know how Jesus is. But then they can say, well, he violates the law of Moses. See, he's not for God. And you know what Jesus does? He looks at the woman. Now, let's stop there real quick. In justice, doing justice means that you want to do what's right. These leaders, being very religious, use justice as their cause. Many of us love justice. We don't like when people are doing the wrong things in society. We may have justice in our minds based on one system of the right or one system of the left. You know, there is a leftist justice as well, a social justice, but it kind of turns things a little bit around. But when we're big into justice, sometimes we forget about mercy. That's happen that happens when you go to the slammer or you get canceled or deplatformed or whatever it is. Micah says, do justice and what? Love what? Right and left. Right and left of it. Whether your left is right or right or left. Micah is telling us what God wants us to hear. Is just because you have justice on your side doesn't mean you're right. Maybe some of us love mercy more than justice. We would rather always be the nice guy, have sympathy. Sympathy for others, which of course we need to have as human beings. Because our job is to care for others, right? Sometimes we get rid of all justice. You want to get rid of all, any rules, any regulations. But you know what happens is mass hysteria. Some of us like one side. Some of us like the other side. But now here's the question, and this is what comes to the crux of it all. How is it? that you can have justice and mercy together. How? Let's continue reading. Are you with me in the text? Because our fortune cookie is coming. Actually, we're in the middle of it. So, he has told you, O mortal, what is good and what God requires to act in justice and to love mercy. And, and here's the key, this is the one thing you need that will enable you to know the difference between to walk what? Humbly. Who? Where? With your God. 
That's the hard part, isn't it? Yeah, all of us think we have humility. Um, I remember when I went to Thailand, it was funny because uh, uh, there's some cultures that are big, bold cultures that are like, I'm better than you, you know. It's more like, you know, that, uh, you know, real pushy culture. Then there are other cultures that are very submissive, but they're not submissive. They're like this, oh yeah, no problem, oh yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. And the minute you pass, uh, you, know, you know what I mean? You, you know, those cultures as well. And all of us, by the way, I don't care what color your skin is. All of us have gone through this. All around the world, every culture is the same. We have differences. How we do things, names, faces, and places change. But human beings remain human even in other countries, okay? So, and even in other little galvanized groups in Los Angeles, right? The truth is, Sometimes we can feign humility, but that doesn't mean we're actually humble. Sometimes us saying, oh, no problem, means I'm better than you. So, does that make sense? Someone is pushing along their own thing, and oh, no, just give him what he wants, just give him what he wants. Remember, we're better. We're gonna be the bigger person. We'll let him do. That's not humility. That is mercy, justice kind of mix. Humility is different. The word humility was coined uh, in Greek by Aristotle. And that word is used in the New Testament when it refers to humility, obviously. It is not being above anyone else and not being below anyone else, but being what? equal. Ellen White said an amazing thing. Whoever said that, I agree. Ellen White said an amazing thing. She said that at the cross of Jesus is where mercy and justice, do you remember the quote? Kissed. Why? Because Jesus brought himself down, became like us, humble. Not because he was better than us and therefore he was better, we all know that, but he did not, it says in Ephesians, he did not figure that as an attainment that he wants to get. Instead, he came down and became with us, brothers and sisters, together. One individual once said that is a powerful statement that the highest place that any human being can have is at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Where humility truly reigns he is only great because we say you're great. But he never took that place to be great. He took that place so that he might serve you and me. My friends, walking humbly with your God is the hardest thing to do. But it also is the most wonderfully easy thing to do as well. Well, how I mean that is, it means we stop worrying about ourselves. We stop looking at others. When we have justice in our hearts, we get angry because of things we see. I mean, I'm looking at Afghanistan and I'm like, what a stupid thing we did, you know? And therefore I judge. I judge both sides. I judge all the sides, because remember, I'm the one that's always right. Maybe I'm not always right. Maybe all of us must walk humbly with our God. That includes our leaders. That includes even our president. That includes all of anyone who wants to call themselves by the name of Jesus Christ. 
Ephesians chapter five, verse one, he says, my dear children, live your life as of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself as a fragrant offering for you and I. Wow, what a powerful statement. Be like Jesus, mimic him. Copy him. No copyright needed. Be like him. He's calling us to copy how he does stuff. To walk in humility with others. And that is how justice and mercy can kiss in your life. Every time you think you're right, find the evidence, make sure it's true, stand with it, but also allow yourself to understand that you need to walk with God in his humility. Because remember, you may be right, but being right sometimes can be overrated. Maybe you can be right while at the same time loving the one who is wrong. Walk together with your God in humility. God bless you all. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for showing us the example of mercy and justice on the cross. Lord, help us to show that as well to others, mercy 
uh, and justice. And Lord, we thank you as well for showing us the perfect example of how to hu walk humbly with our God. And Lord, we, uh, that even though that you were the king, you humble yourself to be a servant and to be fully surrendered to our God, Lord. So help us to, to learn that as we walk humbly with our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I want to thank each one of you for being here as well. It's wonderful to have you here at Streams of Life. I know we got some technical issues every once in a while, but one step at a time, sweet Jesus. Remember, share this out. Share it with your friends on Facebook. You can share it with your cell phone and give a little life to someone else in this way. May God bless you all and may the joy that flows from the cross of Calvary infest your life, give you hope, purpose, and the future. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to thank the band. God bless you all. Thank you. All right. Something got here. So uh, we'll go fix that. Anyway, but I don't...